ChatGPT is an exceptional language model developed by OpenAI. Incorporating the latest deep learning algorithms to deliver human-like text generation and comprehension. It has the ability to understand and respond to questions and prompts with accuracy and coherence across a range of topics. Its applications span across various natural language processing tasks such as conversation, summarization and translation, making it a valuable tool for businesses and individuals alike. While creating an app with similar functionality may seem like an impossible task, the truth is, it's not. Thanks to OpenAI's API, it has made it easier than ever to integrate complex functionality into your apps. With access to pre-trained models like ChatGPT, building cutting-edge language applications has never been easier. Welcome to the video, where we're going to be building a quick and basic level React app that mimics some of the functionality of OpenAI's ChatGPT. In this video, we're going to be using React and Tailwind CSS, to create a modern and responsive UI. We will then connect that up to the API that is available through OpenAI. This API will help give our application some functionality that mimics OpenAI's ChatGPT3. Once we're done the design and the implementation, we will then host it using Vercel to make it accessible via the web. So just a quick disclaimer, I am relatively new to React. So if you're watching me do things a certain way and thinking, why is he doing it that way? That's your reason why. However, I do welcome feedback, so if anyone has any tips or ways to do things better, do drop them in the comments below as I'd be very interested to hear. So, let's not waste any more time and let's get stuck into the video and see how we can build a basic React app that mimics some of the functionality of ChatGPT3. So, first of all, I'm just going to hop into Figma to show you the quick designs that I've done. I'm just keeping it pretty plain, simple and basic. We have a message box where a user can enter messages message bubbles to display each message, a small emoji icon, and then the application name. The way this is gonna work is that the user is gonna enter in a message to the text box. That message will then be sent to OpenAI's API and will then receive a response and display it to the user. So with the designs out of the way, let's jump into some code and look at how we're gonna start building out this small application, is to create a React application. So with this npx create react app command, we run npx create react app, the name of the application, and then TypeScript is the language we're going to be using for this. There are some arguments that this might not be the best way to create a react application. However, as it's just a small and simple project, this should be fine. So once that's done and our application has been created, we should be able to see it. You can just go ahead and cd into that directory. And the next thing we're gonna want is Tailwind CSS npm install tailwind followed by npx init the next thing we're going to want to do is open up our application and add in the references for tailwind css first thing we need to do is go to tailwind.config add in our configuration with the content we want go to app.css and add in the references we need you'll be able to find all this on the tailwind documentation and the repo will be up on github for anyone that's interested so with Tailwind installed, I think the first next thing to do is to create our first component. So if we just go back to designs, the first thing I want to work on is the header component here that renders the name of the application. So with that, I'll create a new folder called components where all the components will live. The first one is going to be our header.tsx and I'll add in the code here. Again, this will all be up in GitHub for anyone that's interested. Then put in the app.tsx. So if I go ahead and pop in that header, we can see now that's loaded. So the next thing to do, if we go back to the designs, is to work on the little emoji icon in the middle. So for that, I'll go to components. I'll create a new file called emoji.tsx. I am going to need an image for this one, so I'll create a new folder and source directory and call it assets. I'll pop in the file that's needed and then within my emoji component I'll import that image and add in the code so then when the app.tsx add a reference to this emoji and there we go 
The only thing that's off now is the background color. So if I go to index.css and change the background color, that looks a bit better. So if we go back to the designs, we're seeing we're kind of getting there. The next thing I want to work on is the message bubbles. So we're going to have an incoming and outgoing. The only main difference is going to be the color and the direction that the little arrow is pointing. So the first one we're going to work on is the message from component. So if I go to components, create a new file, message from tsx import the emoji image as you might want to display a little icon beside the message define a proper interface for our component because each message is going to have some content which will be a string that will need to be passed down and then add in our code so if we go to app.tsx message from Give it some content. And we can see here is the message bubble. Obviously this won't be a hard coded string. Eventually it's gonna be data um, coming back from the API. But for now we can just leave this in. The next thing now is the message to bubble. So if I go to components, message to dot tsx. This will have just a user asset icon just to represent who's sending it. This will also take some data content, which will be a string. So we're going to set a prop for that and then import the code for that. If we go back to app.tsx and let's see if this is looking. We've got some content. Now we can see that's random like that. We're starting to get a bit closer to what our designs look like. The next thing I want to work on is the message container. So these messages are all going to be contained and displayed dynamically. So as new messages come in or come out, there's going to need to be a way we can loop over them and display them dynamically. We'll also need this section to be scrollable. So as new messages come in, the user can scroll down or scroll up to look at new or previous messages. So in order to do this, I'm going to create a new component called message container. TSX. I'm going to add in the necessary imports I'm going to need and then define the types for our messages. So each message will have content and a recipient. So the content is going to be the actual information that was sent or received and then the recipient is who's receiving it. So in this case, Lee's receiving this message and the user is going to be receiving this message. So the next thing we want to add in is the actual function component. So we're going to use React Use State to store and be able to set the messages. This will allow us to get new messages and add new messages to the messages array. This is going to hold a type of message, which from which we know above is an array of message objects. We're also going to have a little function send data that will be responsible for setting new messages. And what this is going to do is append new messages to the current state of all messages. This will give us a way shortly to pass information from a child component to a parent component. What this will do here is this will loop over all the messages. If it's from the user, it's going to display a message from bubble and otherwise it's going to display a message to bubble. So the next thing we want to work on is the actual send message input field that is just here. I'm going to go to components. I'm going to create a new file, call it send message .tsx. So the first thing we're going to need is a way to communicate with OpenAI's API. So if you go to OpenAI API online and you log in, there will be a way to go to your account and view your API keys. You'll need to generate a key in order to communicate with the API. Once you have your key, the next thing we're going to want to do is npm install OpenAI. Nextly, I'm going to add the necessary imports I'm going to need, and we're also going to need React icons. So the next thing I want to do is import the interfaces that we need to communicate with the API. This will all be on the developer uh, resources and documentation for OpenAI. And this component will also take a prop of type send data that will be callable. So in our message container, we'll be able to set messages.
Now I'm going to add in the rest of this component. We have a handle change event to handle any changes when the user enters in information within the text box. We have a function called send to parent which takes in a message as a string and a recipient, creates a message object and then calls the send data function to send that information to the parent component. We also have a make request function which makes the request to OpenAI's API, gets and returns our response. We have a handle click event so when a user clicks the send button we'll clear the text field, we'll send a message to the parent component, we'll make a request to the API calling our make request function, get that response and then also send that to the parent component. So with all that put in place, if we go into the message container, import to send message and then like I said we need to pass in the send data function. To make this function accessible outside this component so that this send message component can send information to it. So now if we go to app.tsx and replace these message bubbles with our message container, that container will now be rendered. We can see we have the send message component here and that's going to iterate over all the messages that are currently in state of all messages and obviously of course now we have none. So we're all going well if I type in a message here. What should happen is this send message component will hit a button click. We'll clear the current information within the text field. We'll send the message that I've sent, what is HTML, to the parent component, which is the container that will render it here. We'll make a request to the API to ChatGPT to get the answer to what is HTML. And we'll then send that response to the parent component, which is the container here, and that should be rendered. So with that, there we can see we have that basic functionality implemented. The next thing to do is render it on the web. So for this step, we're going to use Vercel. We jump over to the terminal and sudo npm i global Vercel, pop in our password. If we then run Vercel, this will start the process of deploying to Vercel. You'll need to create an account on Vercel before you do this, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. So once that's done, we can then see we get a little URL letting us know that it's deployed. So if we go ahead and follow through with that, we can now see our application is hosted at this URL. And we can even, I'll give it something a bit more um, difficult. I'll say, explain this code. Send that. And there we have it. So with all that out of the way, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. And if you haven't already, do hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.